Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. We're going to go ahead and look at 1C in our AKS portfolio. It says, I can analyze and interpret data to determine trends of the following number of valence electrons, types of ions formed by the main group elements, location and physical chemical properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, and phases at room temperature. So let's just jump right into phases at room temperature. Um, so this is a periodic table and it's color coded. You can tell the white is solids, blue liquids, and yellow gases. So we're supposed to answer these questions based off of these facts. So it says analyze the periodic table. What state of matter are most of the elements? Clearly they're mostly white, which are solids, right? Um, you guys can notice that. Um, name the two elements that are liquid. There's only two elements on the periodic table that are liquid at room temperature. Remember, you guys, you can make any element, a solid, liquid, or gas that you want to if you get the right temperature range. Um, but at room temperature, only two are liquid, and that's going to be bromine right here and mercury. Uh, where are the most, uh, where are most of the gases located? If you look, the majority of the gases are on the right-hand side. I put right-hand side of the staircase, and I'm going to show you what that means in a minute. Um, but this is mostly the right-hand side with the exception of hydrogen over here. So we're now going to look at families, okay? So this is saying what families on the periodic table from cations and ions, but first you have to know what the families are to begin with, okay? Okay, so each family has its unique um, characteristics and properties, and we group elements in families because they do act or react the same, okay? So they have unique um, properties that are all similar. Notice they go up and down. Okay, so here's the alkali metal family, and these are going to be highly reactive, okay? Um, alkaline earth um, metals, they are reactive as well, but not quite as reactive as the alkaline earth metal. Um, transition metals is this big chunk right here in the middle. Um, then we have families that are named after the top element for a minute. So boron family, carbon family, nitrogen family, oxygen family. And this one's not named after the top element. And this one's actually called halogen. Um, halogen family, um, they react really, really frequently with the alkali metal family. And that's because alkali metal has one valence electron and halogens have seven. So we really want a full octet, right? So they can make a full octet very easily. So they react. Um, and when they react, it's um, usually a pretty violent reaction. It's pretty cool. And then we have the noble gas and noble gas is group 18 and these are the elements that are um, very stable they don't really want to react at all because they already have a full octet so they don't really have a reason to um, bond or react with other elements at the bottom here we have the lanthanides and the actinides um, and these are going to be our rare earth metals a lot of these are created in a lab so going back to our question about which families form cations and anions, um, you probably already know that metals in general, so <clears throat> these families over here, are going to have lower valence electrons, so they end up giving them away. If we give away electrons, we end up more positive, so cations. So these families are going to be more cations, while our non-metal families are going to be accepting those electrons so they become more and more negative and they become anions all right let's go ahead and look at this one and this one is just kind of a review honestly about bor um boron <clears throat> and it's asking us all these questions about drawing it so you have to know a couple things so boron is right here remember that um the group number so this one 13 if we cover up that one, that's really going to be the number of valence electrons we have. So boron has three valence electrons. And we also know that boron has five protons because um, that is the atomic number. <clears throat> so our first question says, um, how many electrons does boron have? Uh, valence electrons, well, it has three because it's in group 13, right? So how do we know? Oops. Group 13, there we go, fix my mistake. Um, so it does have three valence electrons. How many energy shells does boron have? So really cool thing, um, these numbers on the side are period numbers, okay? So this whole row is period one, meaning that there's one shell in our atom. This whole row here 
is period two, meaning there's two shells in our atom, and so on and so forth. So three shells, four shells, all the way down. Boron is in period two. Do you guys see that? Period two, which means it has two shells. So I can start to draw this really quick and easily, right? I know it has two shells. I know I'm going to have three in the outermost shell. And then I can fill everything in the middle to its max. Um, because we know the first shell holds two, the second shell holds eight, and the third shell holds eight. So whatever you have in the middle left over, just fill it to its max. In this case, we only had one shell left um, and that's in the middle. And the very first shell only holds two. So go ahead and fill that in too. So I have a total of five electrons and boron is number five. So that's correct. That's how I can check my work. I know that my protons and electrons are going to be the same because it's a neutral atom. So if I drew um, th um, three on the outside, two on the inside, give me a total of five. I know I'm correct. All right. So um, that is my Bohr diagram. You can go ahead and you can draw in your protons and your neutrons as well from the periodic table. The next thing is our classification of metal, nonmetals, and metalloids. So let's talk about each one individually. Metals are elements that are shiny and good conductors of heat and electricity. Um, they are malleable, which means they can be hammered into a thin sheet. They are also ductile, which means that they can be drawn into a wire. And here's some good examples of metals. We guys already know metals, but um, lead, copper, tin, gold, silver, platinum, all of that, right? Now, nonmetals right here um, are elements that are dull, which just means they're not shiny. Um, they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They're solid. Um, solids tend to be very brittle, which means they break very easily. So they're not malleable. They're not ductile. Um, few um, familiar objects are made of only nonmetals. So if you look, some good examples are iodine, sulfur, neon. I also want you guys to notice that the majority of these are really not solids, okay? The majority of our nonmetals are going to be gases. And if you notice, the majority of our metals are solids, okay? So that's a definite difference between them. And then if we go over here to metalloids, metalloids are also called semiconductors. They have properties of both metals and nonmetals, so they share some of each. Some metalloids are shiny, some are dull. Metalloids um, are somewhat malleable and ductile, a little bit of each. Um, some, uh, some metalloids conduct heat and electric current well, why others not so much. Um, so this is going to be kind of like the middle ground, all right? If you notice um, boron, silicon, all of these are going to be located right here on the staircase. So this big black bolded line, you will hear it be referred to as the staircase or the zigzag line, okay? Now, what that's really telling us is this is where the metalloids are found along the staircase. So anything to the right of the staircase is going to be a non-metal with the exception of hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen is kind of just like a lost cause and we just stick it there because hydrogen has one valence electron and this is group one where the valence electrons have one. Um, but it doesn't really fit over here because what's over here? Metals. Metals are on the left-hand side of the zigzag line, and it's clearly not a metal, right? Nor is it part of the alkali metal family because it's a gas, all right? Um, we only put it here because it has one valence electron, and this is group one where those go. So if you look at the next thing on your sheet, you have this big table, and it says, hey, put these where they go to make sure you understand the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. <clears throat> so I went ahead and did this. You can pause it, look this over you guys, um, make sure that you know all of them, um, but they're here for you. All right, ask me any questions you need to. Thanks you guys, bye.